When Carla with Fraser Retirement Community contacted me to ask if I could make 200 leaves for a donor appreciation wall, I knew exactly how I was going to complete the project. I'm Heather Dawson, a glass artist in Manitoba's Interlake. I've been part of the WAVE Interlake Artists Group for five years now. We're a cooperative of artists from the Interlake region along Lake Winnipeg, and our artists range from Okamak Marsh all the way up to Arbor. We have around 25 artists in the group, each bringing something unique to the cooperative. The last couple of years, one of our potters in the group, Alan Lakovetsky, he'd been nudging me about pairing up to make some custom molds for my glasswork. At the time, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to make or even what we could make. So we hadn't really connected yet to make anything. Carla was looking for leaves similar to a leaf that I had available on my website, which was a cast glass leaf from a commercially made mold. She wanted her 200 leaves smaller than the one that I had made from this mold. So in my mind, I started going through the different ways I might be able to make the leaves for her. I've created simple casting molds in the past using wire and fiber blanket, but I didn't think it made sense to create this kind of a dam to fire individually 200 leaves. When I reached out to Alan, he was excited to share his knowledge and to talk through the best options for what I was going to need for the project. So over the years you get to know artists um, on a personal level and uh, it's really nice to have the opportunity to offer support or advice uh, um, or equipment or facilities. Uh, um, so it's uh, very supportive community. I love the, the idea of being part of a cooperative uh, where everybody pools their expertise and experience together. I think artists feed off each other in terms of energy and inspiration. While COVID has made it difficult for our artist group to connect as we normally would, Alan and I were able to meet in his studio so I could learn a few techniques about working with clay. Our first trial didn't result in something that I was able to use, but it did lead the way to create what I needed. A second trip to Alan's studio, we were able to get some usable molds to check the resulting size. The clay shrinks as it dries, so uh, it was an unknown variable to me, and the glass also shrinks as it's casting in the mold. The air spaces between the particles of glass squeeze out, so the glass can shrink in the mold up to a quarter of an inch. After a trial run, I was able to fine tune the size of the plaster stamp, adjusting the resulting size of the glass piece that came out of the mold that I was making. I bought a block of clay and I set to work. Once I had my size correct, I stamped out as many of the molds as I could fit into my largest kiln. Even though I made them using a textured stamp, each of them ended up a little different with variations to the sculpted edges. With Alan's recommendation on the firing schedule, I was able to fire the molds in my glass kilns. While the clay would normally have been fired a little hotter than the maximum capability of my glass kilns, I had good results firing the clay to a slightly lower temperature that was within the, the limitations of my kilns. It was actually kind of nice not needing my heater on during the cold spell that we had here in Manitoba. The heat coming from the kiln as it was firing daily was enough to keep the studio really cozy. I cast the glass using a mixture of different colors of glass frits, which are basically just small pieces of glass. As they heat in the kiln, the glass becomes molten and it flows together to create one single piece. Because of the way the leaves were being mounted to the donor wall, each of the pieces needed a hole in the middle of the leaf. Um, I thought that floating leaves would look very interesting, so I worked with Carla to source some standoff posts that would be suitable for the size of the leaves. With COVID, I wasn't able to travel to be on site for the installation, and there's always a worry about whether the install is going to go smoothly or not. But I checked each leaf individually to ensure that the hole was the correct size for the bolt to fit through, so I was confident that they would have no problem doing the install. While the installation wasn't without a few minor hiccups, the result looks amazing. I think the donors of Fraser Retirement Community will really appreciate the work of art recognizing their support. I'm really looking forward to when the COVID restrictions are lifted and I'll be able to travel and see the finished installation in person. 
But for now, being able to create a custom installation like this has been a very rewarding experience for me. And adding a new medium to pair with my glasswork has been an invaluable addition to my knowledge base. It's really going to open up new avenues for my artwork. To see more about the Wave Interlake Artist Studio Tour, visit watchthewave.ca or click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.